<clears throat> a shocking study done by the British Medical Journal shows that processed foods make up for about 60% of the average American diet. That is more than double the daily recommended amount. Well, many of us don't think twice before we throw out in that box meal into the microwave or order takeout or fast food, we really should start. Well, I'm certainly not trying to persuade anyone or tell anyone what they can and cannot eat. I simply want to spread this information so that one can make an informed decision when it comes to the next meal time. Well, quite a long time ago, I was eating a horrible diet consisting of nothing but microwavable meals and a ton of baked goods. And while it often satisfied me, my stomach uh, was upset all the time. I was getting I was getting sick pretty much nightly and my weight was going up and up the scale and One day I finally decided I needed to make a change Maybe if I cut some of these bad processed foods out, I would feel better and it worked I strictly limited my processed foods and started eating healthy whole foods and what do you know? I stopped getting sick my weight came down and I felt a lot better. And then I made the conclusion that the food I was putting in my body was literally acting as a poison to me. In order to properly educate ourselves on all of this, we need to first learn how processed foods are made and where they come from. We can understand that what counts as a processed food by seeing examples, and we can then learn what a healthy diet consists of so that we are informed to make our own choices. Once we're informed about making our own choices and we're educated on all these types of food, it's then up to us as individuals what we put into our bodies. I feel that in this situation, knowledge is definitely power and important here. So you might wonder where processed food comes from. It certainly isn't grown as a plant or comes from an animal product. Processed foods are one that's made with chemicals in a manufacturing lab. It will have artificial sweeteners, colorings, and flavorings to make it more palatable to the consumer. High fructose corn syrup is very cheap and a common way um, that these manufacturers can sneak these chemicals into our foods. They sweeten the food, make it taste better, and overly consumption of high... Uh, high fructose corn syrup actually can lead to diabetes and metabolic syndrome over time, which is, as you know, very harmful. So another commonly used ingredient in processed foods is refined or simple carbs. These are things like white bread, white pasta, and white rice. Um, these are actually automatically converted into glucose when we put them into our bodies, and our body processes glucose by turning it directly into a fat. So now that we have a basic understanding of how processed foods are made and some of the commonly used ingredients, we can bring that knowledge together and talk about how to actually identify these processed foods. So being able to process, uh, to properly identify these processed foods um, is key knowledge in order to make that informed decision. So the best part about this is that processed foods are actually really simple to identify and most times you just need to look at the food label. So when you read that label of ingredients, how many ingredients are in there? Are you seeing a whole list of chemically kind of hard to pronounce foods that make no sense? Or is it just a few simple ingredients? If you see a long list of all these foods that are hard to pronounce and everything, then they probably don't belong in your body. Um, that's a telltale uh, sign of a processed food. And also, if you look at that list of ingredients, you know, how many are there? Like I said, is it usually a good rule to go by? Is anything under five ingredients is usually okay? Anything more than I'd say three to five ingredients, they're probably sneaking quite a few chemicals in there. So once you learn how to spot these processed foods, you might see that they're everywhere you turn. However, there is a safe amount of processed foods that we can eat. Um, one really good rule that I like to go by is called the 80-20 rule. It allows us to, it is actually highly recommended by nutritionists and it's a personal favorite of mine and allows us to stay 
on the healthier side while also having a balance of having some more enjoyable foods as well. So the 80-20 rule is really simple. Um, you just find out how many calories you're eating in a day. So I like to recommend keeping a food log for maybe three days and averaging that out, or you could use a calorie calculator. Um, once you find that sort of ballpark of the average amount of calories that you are eating every day, you take 20% of that. And that 20% is going to be the amount of um, processed foods that's safe for you to consume. So that 20% can be anything from spaghetti to fast food to a Pop-Tart. There's no limit on that 20%. However, that extra 80% of food, that remaining 80%, you need to do your best to keep that as whole, unprocessed, natural foods like vegetables or homemade pasta, homemade food, you know, things with just a few simple ingredients. That should be the other 80% of your diet. So today we learned about what a processed food actually is, as well as some ingredients to look out for. And we learned how to easily identify a chemically processed food and also went over how to safely integrate them into your daily diet in a healthy manner if you choose to do so. So I hope this has been useful for you. And I hope the next time you go shopping for groceries, you go in there armed with this knowledge and use it as you see fit. So thank you so much for your time.